or uh, Ramesh Babu Prakadanda because I think that everyone knows where we're going to be focused as the hands are shaken. I'm going to give a real quick shout out before we fully focus on the chess moves to remind the fans you can go over to chess.com slash events and cast your vote for the result. You should probably do so if you want to have a chance to win some chessable courses, some diamond memberships. Go over and do it. You can vote before move 10 as someone is standing in front of a camera. First cameraman blocking a camera of the day. Uh, Robert, you win the prop bet. There you go. <laughs> I'm rolling Tronfers. I've never done that. Just kidding. I most certainly have. Um, that's how I drew Wesley in the last round of a U.S. championship. Listen, uh, it's a 14-round event. These games are not going to impact uh, place number one, which is the only place that we care about. Let me just be straightforward here. Uh, the players deserve a major, major round of applause. Each and every player, particularly, you know, Nijada Basov, the lowest rated player in the field for the way that he fought each and every round. A couple of incredibly significant draws, uh, a black draw against the Anapomnishi, and Ali Reza Perusha, Fidit, who just drew in that Berlin. Okay, they'll get a little bit more rest. I get it. We take their hats off to them. Fidit, he had a pretty incredible event, his first showing in the candidates. So at this point, I just show respect to the players. This gives us one less game to look at. And Ukesh, in the meantime, played a very rare move, which did get Hikaru thinking a little bit, but I don't want to jump the gun here because we also have a really interesting battle on the right side of our screen with Fabi and Yana Pamishi. Yeah, I think we're going to be spoiled for choice here between these two games because uh, the hype is not just hype this time. This is must-win chess. Uh, are you are you surprised to see how aggressively Yonda Pomashi is already expanding on the king side here, Robert? I mean, the, the theory here I think is still is still kind of known, but how Bobby handles this most aggressive way Black can play in these Rogozins is uh, is going to be interesting to see. Well, I'm more accustomed to seeing Fabio Caruana with that position from the black side. He has played this yeah. before. It's a fascinating choice. You see Black storming the pawns up the board because that dark squared bishop on g3 on the right hand side of our screen, it's about to be trapped. That's Black's maybe he will not allow this. But I think for Jan, he is showing his ambition straight from the opening. And I can't blame him. He needs to win. Otherwise, his chances at a third straight kid's victory and a third straight world championship match. They go out the window, but this could be good news for Fabiano and his many fans, yeah. especially looking at the other board, Danny. And I, I know that's difficult because we're juggling at the moment. But for Fabiano Caruana fans, looking at what Gukesh has decided in the opening, it looks like a position where, all right, you know, if Gukesh is going to win, Hikaru is going to have to just throw everything at him and kind of force his own loss. Yeah, it's, again, I know we, we went through the pregame here, and of course everyone's talking about it. I do want to talk a little bit more about the dynamic of chess does have a draw as a possible result. In fact, at a high level, at the high levels of chess, a draw is often the most likely result.
So a move like rook a5 can be played, and after check, the king moves, you get a queen. And the point is, this is still a draw. We have king and, king and bishop and pawn versus king and rook. There's no real way for white to win this. Um, doing so, you risk losing. If you try to coordinate the king and rook in any kind of fashion, you probably get a queen. And even if you lost the pawn, it's a theoretical draw. So, sorry to sound dismissive, but you're showing again that even if black has to part ways with the rook for the new queen on a8, this is still a draw. Sorry, Robert, you oh, got yeah. it. If that black king were on e6, for example, we might be singing a different tune, because if the line where white takes this bishop on d2, and then and we see Hikaru thinking about it just quickly after king takes d2, uh, yeah, the, instead of uh, okay, whatever move okay. order you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. king takes d2, a7, right here, the rook a5, a7, excuse me, I got confused now in the move order, but the point is that rook f8 check is a big threat for the black king going to g7, so if you were on e6, it would be in the wrong square. But we see that the yep. players, it looks like they're just going down these wide board here. It seems like we're just a matter of time, but you could catch at minimum getting to a time break. You move right, to the board. Hikaru is about to get a queen, which quickly exit the board as Gukesh snaps her off. And uh, yeah, I think Gukesh is moments away from at the very least clinching a tiebreaker affair depending on what happens in the other game. After E3, I wouldn't even be surprised if they just agreed to a draw here soon. Yeah, and even without the pawn, it's a draw, but then Hikaru would make 50 moves. With the pawn on E3, Hikaru is likely to just give up his rook for the bishop. There will be their kings on the board, and that is an indication of what this means to the players, how hard they fought, but ultimately Gukesh, the professionalism, the composure, until the very last moments, you can move the bishop, it's essentially the same thing, Robert. That's it. What a game. And what a performance by Gukesh. All eyes now on the other board. Here we see that the moves, they're trickling in, and Hikaru has just moved his rook along the fourth rank. You would see him, they're moving faster, even than yeah. uh, we should get on display. But it seems like the last pawn is gone, so Hikaru's given up his rook. He's given up his winning chances. The game is officially a draw. The handshake is in. And uh, Gukesh officially at minimum goes to tie breaks with Denny. He may be our world champion challenger is Fabiano Carwana cannot find a win. And what a candidates the young man has had. As I said at the top of the show, people thought he was here to get experience. Turns out he was giving us an experience, the Gukesh experience. And we might be living in a Gukesh world here for many years to come. That guy has at the very least punched his ticket to a tiebreaker. What a thrilling one it would be if it does happen tomorrow. But it may not even happen. He might, he might be the man already having clinched a match against the world chess champion in Dignity Red. So, breathe it in, folks. Shout out to the fan base. Shout out to the youngest player in the candidates' field. 